How do you reflect on your time at Man United? I love my time there. I don't think media helped me. I refused great working opportunities. The first one was even very, very hard to, uh, to refuse because it was Portugal. I could be their coach in the national <laughs> team, also yours. I had it there on the table. No way. Uh, yeah, I didn't because um, I gave everything. I gave my heart. I gave even options that could be considered not very clever by the professional point of view. Cristiano Ronaldo. Do you even coach him? I think you don't coach. Jose, we need to know what is next. Welcome back to Five, Stephen Housen, Rio Ferdinand, and today we have got Jose Mourinho, the special one. We have got him exclusively. This is presented by football.com. This is part one. There's going to be a few episodes. If you want the full audio, you can check the link in the description for the full audio download. In this part, we're going to be talking about AS Roma, what happened, and we're going to be talking about his entire career in this one. So let's check it out. Jose, firstly, thank you very much for, for allowing us to come and speak to you here in Rainy Lisbon. I know. <laughs> I, can't I know. Believe it. I feel ashamed. <laughs> it's, a, it's an attack to our prestige. <laughs> I had sunglasses. I, I had suntan lotion. <laughs> I know. Me too. Me too. I come to Lisbon with this intention too. So, uh, listen. Well, I think we, we there's only one place to kick off. I think the recent news, obviously, Roma, your departure there. I actually can't believe we're here sitting talking to you with that as the backdrop because two back-to-back -back finals. The fans in the stadium full up. I could see it from just from England looking in how much the fans adored you there. What kind of happened and got us to here now? I own a decision. And you have to respect, don't even discuss, you know. Um, of course, I feel and I believe that you feel the same as, as me that uh, the fans are always the heart of a football club. Without them, no football club. But there is an ownership. And when the owner decides, you have just respect. Mm. Is, is, is that, would you say that's one of the most painful kind of exits for you? Because it was I so sudden? I can say is, is the one that hurt me more. I can, I can say that. You can ask me why. Because I gave, uh, I gave everything. I gave my heart. I gave mm. even some options that could be considered um, not very clever by the professional point of view. I refused great working opportunities. Uh, the first one was even very, very hard to uh, to refuse because it was Portugal, and Portugal with probably national team national team with probably the the best national team ever uh, three years before um, a world cup uh, then i had uh, a big one from from saudi i i didn't uh, i didn't hide it at at the time because it was was really was really big and i did it for uh, mm, i don't say the first time but Normally, I'm very pragmatic in my choices. I'm very professional in my choices. I try always to be very emotionally controlled. Mm -hmm. And you could see that, for example, when I left other clubs um, after Quick. winning mm -hmm. finals and this kind of thing. And in this case, I was not pragmatic. I was emotional. I gave everything. So in the end, uh, when I left, I left um, I heard it. Uh, I had. Uh, I have the the great feeling of uh, I gave so much happiness to the people um, because two finals in a two European finals in a row uh, doesn't happen often, especially in a club like like Roma without a big history of um, European success. And then I was walking in the street and the people take us to Dublin, take us to Dublin, take us to Dublin. <laughs> and I, I had that Dublin in, in my mind. I had that third European final in a row in my mind. But then you have to respect. Uh, the owner is always the owner and uh, you have to respect the decision, which is what I'm doing now. Mm. Did you feel like you got your spark back at Roma? Because you look like you got your spark back at Roma. 
I don't want to speak about Roma more than what we did, especially going into um, the intimacy of mm. of myself and the football club. I, I always felt this way. I always did it this this way. Uh, it's not the first time I left the club. Uh, it's probably the first time I I am feeling it in a different way. But I always felt that is the right way to to do it. You know, you leave the club by your decision or by the club uh, decision, and then you move on. Mm. You try to learn from uh, the experience. You try to be better for the next one. But I don't like to dig in, and I I don't even like to speak publicly mm. about it. Just I want to talk about about you as well. I think uh, I played against your team. It's always difficult to play against. Always hard games. It's still difficult. But <laughs> well, yeah. when I played personally, yeah, it was but always you played difficult. you played against uh, Chelsea, big rivals, Porto. and you play against teams with the same potential as yours, with the same ambition as, as, as your team. We were playing to win it, you were playing to win it. Uh, so let's say from strength to strength. I say that uh, even when my team is not um, a top team, even when my team is not the team with more potential, it's always difficult yeah, to play against I mean, us. It's always difficult to play against us because we, we start always from, from the base that um, a team has to be a team. And then, of course, you you have that by by your experience. When you had the team with the best players, is different than you have a team without the best players. Mm -hmm. But this is true. I feel I feel exactly exactly that way. And sometimes when I I see football, when it's too easy for the better team to beat the team with less uh, potential, I always ask myself why. And how is it possible? Because I always feel that the team, even if it isn't a team with more potential, has to make it difficult. Because mm. by by organization, by tactical work, and by uh, a very strong mentality, even if you are not the team with more potential, you still can do it. Not do it in the sense of winning titles, because to win titles you need, of course, a big potential. But to give you the feeling that you had to play against that guy is always difficult. I think I think it has to be always difficult. And part of the question was is like that creating those teams and creating help creating that culture within those teams. What's the difference between doing it maybe them years ago, the teams I played against, compared to the, the current type of generation of, of players now? What's the difference being able to create those cultures? Because it's you new know, age. Uh, I think what you are speaking about different generations. Mm. I, I, I was going in the initial part of my, of my answer, I was going more in, in the difference of potential. Mm. Um, in the difference of potential, I think it creates also a different way of playing and creates also a different way of approaching. Uh, I'll, I, I always say you have to be arrogant on the pitch when your team is the best one. Mm. And you have to be more cautious when your team is not the best one. When your team is the best, you have to show your power. When mm. your team is not the best, you have to hide or try to hide your problems to try to create a uh, balance. Going from generation to, to generation, I just, I don't have the feeling of uh, previous generations are better than now or people of 20 years ago has a different approach to what people has now. I think in the end, the same ingredients uh, are there. But of course, we, we can feel that looking just to, to you, uh, it is a great podcast, isn't it? I hope it is. Uh, <laughs> 25 years ago, pro podcasts? No. No podcasts. Mm. So communication was very, very different. Mm. I feel that a journalist now, um, what is a journalist now? Mm. Uh, do you know what I mean? Um, what was a coach or a manager 25 years ago? What is now is also difficult to compare. And in relation to, to the players, it's also, difficult to, it's also difficult to compare. There is uh, uh, an evolution in, in everything. And there is an evolution in, in terms of mentality. Um, years ago, probably I thought there is my ideal 
of what a player should be. There is my ideal of what a professional should be. But to transport this in pure terms to today, I think is wrong mm. because we are speaking about a complete different, about a complete different, um, different world. What for us 20 years ago was impossible to happen, now happen and is impossible to change. Mm. Uh, Social media is a big thing as well. Everything, difference. you know, uh, when I was uh, an assistant coach in, in, in Barcelona, it was the beginning of the, of the, um, the mobile phones. Um, and it was forbidden for the players to be on the mobile phone. Mm. You think it's forbidden now? Uh, mm. Half time they're on the phone, no? Yeah, almost, <laughs> or maybe, or maybe, or maybe, yes. So you have to adapt to, to that. I think I adapted very, very well. I think I adapted very, very well to that. Uh, I like to feel young and to feel young uh, when you work among, amongst the, the young guys, you just have to, to adapt, but trying to keep a certain line of what a professional has to, has to be or what a professional should, uh, uh, should be. And I think we are in a world where um, people make uh, football players more individual. Mm -hmm. They are more individual in, in, in everything, the way they think, the personal ambitions, uh, the people around them, uh, the structure around them. Um, the club has a nutritionist, but they have one. Mm. The club has a huge structure of sports science, but they have their man. Um, probably one day uh, a, a great coaching staff, but maybe at home the goalkeeper coach has mm. another goalkeeper. The goalkeeper has another goalkeeper yeah. coach. Everything becomes more individual. And I think uh, the fight, if you can call it a, a fight, is to try to make these individuals be, be a team, mm. be a team. I think b this is the, the, fundamental, the fundamental fight, if you can call it a fight. Mm. What do you think is most important then when you're trying to build a team? Is it the raw ability or is it character? In relation to the individuality? Well, building, just building a team to win. You know, I think the, the first thing to, to build a proper team is the connection, is the connection between the structures. The players, um, and I think you will laugh at it, the players are very intelligent. Intelligent? Uh, yeah. Mm. Um, if not in, intelligent in terms of IQ, because not everyone, of course, is, but that specific intelligent, a feeling of analyzing things, of feeling things, of reading things, even in between the lines, the players are very clever. The players are very, very intelligent. Um, they look and they understand. They look to each other and without <laughs> a word, and yeah. without a word, they know what they are saying. I, I think they feel the strength and they feel the fragility. And in this moment where the structures of the clubs are very complex, I think it's very important that the players, they feel that they are complex, but they are compact. In your time, you just need to look to Sir Alex, look yeah. at him, and in two seconds you understand what you have in front of you, and then you respect, and maybe a little bit of fear, but not, I prefer to say respect, and then you trust, and then you believe, and then you know that if you make something wrong, you are in trouble, he's not in trouble, you know that you are not going to manipulate anybody. You don't care about the press. Mm. And everything is clear. Isn't it? Everything clear. is clear. In mm. this moment, the structures are very complex. But I think the structures must be built in a way where complexity doesn't mean uh, problems. Uh, and sometimes that complexity has to be transformed in something where it's easy for the players to understand that there are no conflicts, there is empathy, and there is, you know, something strong behind the players, behind or before the players' uh, performance. I think this is the most important thing. When you have this, and you have a good communication between the structure, I think anything is, is possible. Yeah, I want to move on to things like the rivalries. You've played in some huge clubs. I mean, I manage huge clubs. Um, where, where would you say the biggest rivalries have been? Because it seems intense in at Roma, but equally, if not more, in Madrid. 
Chelsea in London, where, where's in Porto as well, where's been the, the rivalry you've gone, oh my God, that is different? You know, I, you know, it is everywhere, to be honest. Uh, Roma, Spain, Portugal is hard. Uh, England, I believe, with more, with more discipline. But the rivalries, of course, you know that they are very, very strong in Latin countries, in Latin cultures becomes maybe you can feel more the emotion of it mm. um, even on the negative side even with some aggression even with some uh, violence before after matches England is I believe a much more structured nowadays um, luckily uh, without this level of problems but I would say that um, my times uh, at Real Madrid um, these three years in Real Madrid were years of a huge rivalry with Barcelona. Mm. Also because it was not just the cultural and historical rivalry, but also the moment. The moment. Um, I don't want to say the best players in the world, uh, because of course England always had uh, incredible players, but maybe in that moment there, the best Cristiano, the best Messi, uh, the best um, Benzema, the best Higuain, the best uh, Iniesta, Di Maria, Di Maria, well. everything, everything was was there. Uh, Barcelona, the best, the best team in the, in the world. Real Madrid trying, trying to change uh, that perspective. In the same season, uh, league matches, Super Cup matches. Cup finals, <laughs> Champions League quarterfinals, everything all together. And I felt that in that period there, the world stopped for uh, Barca, Real, Real, Barca, the world stopped mm -hmm. there. And we were feeling uh, that. Then one, one season, Barcelona wins it. Then the next season, Real Madrid wins it. It was beautiful, beautiful, but I think um, if I could say it because of the intensity at every level, was probably was probably there then do you yeah. enjoy that I, I i remember big pressure situations champions league semi-finals finals the rivalries in the moment i don't think i really ever enjoyed it i was in more relief after you win like th those moments are, are they enjoyable for you as a manager you know <laughs> when it's so intestine. um i have to say that it was hard but then you feel that you cannot go uh, higher than that. <laughs> uh, for you to have an example, for us to win the league, we did 100 points. You know that if you don't do 98, 99, 100, you don't win it. <laughs> you know that if you have a draw, you are in trouble mm -hmm. because Barcelona wins. For sure. uh, then the next season, uh, w the previous season, when Barcelona wins, uh, I think we lost with 92 points, 91 points, something like that. So you know that you make a mistake, you are in trouble. You have to win, you have to win, you have to win, you have to win. And then if you have, if you have guys like, uh, like Cristiano, for example, where uh, you are playing against uh, Levante, you are winning 5-0, you tell the guy, relax, <laughs> come on, take a rest. <laughs> no, 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 I can, I can score one, one more goal. When you have guys like this, you know, uh, the, 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 the boat is in the water and you just let the boat go and in the end you, you enjoy the fight. And we did. But of course, it's, uh, it's easy. I don't know. Maybe because of, maybe because of, uh, of, of that pressure, maybe because of that tension. Um, after the second year, Pep went to, to a sabbatical mm. year. Maybe because of that, on the third season, I spoke with the president and I told him I think it's better for me to go. I think it's better for me to go to, to Chelsea and, and change a little bit more. No, Joseph, please don't do it. Now is time where we are going to win it and kill because <laughs> the most difficult time is, is gone. President, I, I agree, the most difficult time is gone, but it's also time for me to, uh, to go. It's draining, uh, tired. Yeah, yeah, you can say a little bit, a little bit like that when the tension is, is high. I think in this moment in Spain, people miss these times. Yeah, <laughs> I think they miss true, it because 
become something uh, something different. But I would say that that period was was tremendous. But Benfica Porto, Porto Benfica, United Liverpool, Liverpool United, uh, mm. Roma, Chelsea Lazio, Arsenal, sure. Lazio Roma, uh, Inter Inter Juve yeah, more than Milan. Inter Milan. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never people, knew that. people. I don't know. Because maybe AC wasn't doing as well then, maybe. I, I don't know. But the, uh, the the first derby I played Inter against Milan, uh, I remember clearly. I was in I was in the bus and I was looking and, you know, people together with Milan scarves with Inter scarves. Oh, yeah. You know, really, really nice, really friendly. I didn't feel it as that big, big derby when his Inter is when you when you feel. Mm. When you feel that something is not going historically well in in between them, what's your pre-match routine look like? You give your team talk an hour before the kickoff. The lads go and warm up. Do you sit in the change room on your own? Do you go and watch the warm up? What you know, you first do? of all, the the guys they know the team even before I say. Always, I don't remember there is a game where the guys they don't know who is going to play because the work you do before, the work right. you do during the week. Normally, the players they they know. Sometimes you can mix a little bit. Sometimes you can try to disguise a little bit. You know, sometimes a leak of information. You don't want it to 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 happen. But normally, the guys they know. The guys they know. There is. I always say that the big work is done uh, before the match day. During the match day, my work as a coach and my staff, you know, is to be on the bench to analyze the unpredictability of the game and be ready to answer to it. But normally the job is, is done. My routine, um, I'm probably one of the few guys that is not uh, superstitious. I'm no, not lucky. at all. That's good. I'm not at all. I think we have enough pressure to have another extra pressure of mm. being superstitious with something, you know. Not. I like the players to be by themselves in that period before the, the warm-up. I, I don't like to go, especially at home, when you have your little office. I don't like to go to the dressing room. Let them be, let them communicate, let them do uh, what they want, let them feel comfortable. And then, of course, be with the guys uh, before uh, the game a few minutes and be with them for 90 minutes. Uh, mm -hmm. And play with them for 90 minutes and be what you think the team needs you to, to be for, for 90 minutes but not no big routines. Right, that was genuinely incredible. Really enjoyed that. That was part one. There are more parts coming. In part two, we're going to get into Manchester United. Thanks again to football.com for helping us sort this interview out. Make sure to go and check out part two as soon as it drops. If you want the full audio, check the link in the description. I'll see you in the next one.